Sarah says in 2009, she saw a yoga and meditation center near her home and was drawn in by its mystical allure. Now, she claims everyone wore white, and at the end of the practice, they praised their guru by kissing a pair of old sandals. So we'll talk about that, but thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. So you said that you first you thought you were just joining a yoga meditation studio. Exactly. Did it feel mainstream when you started out? It really did. Yeah, the, the studio was located on one of the main streets mm -hmm. and in a typical commercial building. So it didn't look like it was tucked away in a back alley somewhere. There were normal looking people going in and everyone I knew did yoga. So I would never have imagined yoga could turn into such a big trap. When did you start to find out um, maybe this is more than I bargained for? It was a really slow process because at first, even the things that I now see as a red flag, like everyone worshiping the leader or chanting the seven minute Sanskrit verse, I went along with it because it was explained so properly. I didn't realize how bad it was until I found out that the residential school within the ashram of this false guru was beating kids even though they claimed to be a nonviolent place. And that's when I started kind of looking back at all the abuse that I had endured there, the verbal assault, the name calling, the body shaming, and even sexual abuse. And I realized this wasn't for my own higher good. This really was something extremely damaging. And you look past a lot of this stuff in the beginning because yeah. you wanted it to be okay. Absolutely. And you got a lot of pressure to recruit others. Yes. And some of this was not cheap, right? No, there were there were fifteen thousand dollar programs that we had to recruit for. And did you know where that money was going? No, we were told it was going towards the construction of a school, a temple, and a free hospital for the community in the surrounding area. And we just assumed that what they told us the money was going to is what it was going to but there was never any financial transparency. So we didn't see the sales receipts for the construction of this so-called temple. And it was only after I left that I realized that should have been a big red flag that they say they're building a hospital, where is it? They've yeah. collected a billion dollars. If you add up all the program fees and all the donations, they should have actually built the temple by now. You went to India after a couple of months, $8,000 mm -hmm. program yes. plus a plane ticket and all. So yeah. you're over there. And you said the guru for this was pretty charismatic. Yes. And had a way of making you or others feel special because would, would single you out yeah. and spend extra time. Mm -hmm. And that was currency for you because you looked yes. up to this person. 100%, yeah. And then if they kind of love bomb you, tell mm -hmm. you how special you are and all of that, then you, you're validated. Absolutely, yes. And currency is the perfect word for it. Like we would say money doesn't matter, only the grace of the guru matters. That was one of the taglines that we had to repeat. So literally it was a currency. And we were told he doesn't favor people based on their wealth or their social status or their appearance. He favors you if your consciousness is raising. And so his attention was also kind of seen as a validation for the practice we were doing. Like my yoga, my meditation must be sincere or he wouldn't be showing me this attention. Yeah. So we didn't really take it so much as a social status thing. We took it as proof that what we were doing was working. Do you have a story or a question for me? Click the link in the description and tell me what in the world is going on.